awesome DIYs for you. Plus, there's a bonus Target Dollar Spot DIY. So with all that being said, let's jump into today's video. Don't forget to subscribe where I post new videos every week. And don't forget to hit your notification bell to all. That way you don't miss any future uploads. Okay, y'all, let's start off with this really fun Farm Fresh sign. So I take one of these tag signs from Dollar Tree. I got these back at like around Valentine's Day and they come in a two pack. They're really good size. So I definitely think that that $1.25 is definitely beneficial because we are definitely getting and seeing better items. So of course I paint this with my Dixie Belle buttercream. Now I wish it was white. I thought I had more white Dixie Belle, but I used my entire jar, so I do have to get more, and I just ended up using the buttercream for this one, and then my white Waverly for the rest, because I do need to use that up, but once I gave this a distressed coat of my Dixie Belle buttercream, then I cut up my March Club Couture transfer. Um, if you're watching this on Monday when this came out, this is your last day to sign up for Club Couture and get your five free transfers. That is a February promotion. March, there will be new promotions, and I do not want you guys to miss out, and you will receive this transfer when you sign up. So moving on, like I said, I cut them up. My kitchen cabinets are a little lighter color than this eucalyptus that I did the barn, so that's why I ended up doing the barn that color. And then, of course, I transferred on the farm fresh and the greenery at the bottom with my black chalk paste. Once I pulled up that last little greenery piece again, if you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know that pulling up that transfer never gets old. And I will just tell you right now that. Um, all these projects do have chalk couture in them, so if that's not up your alley, I definitely understand. Again, I can't wait to get into my shed, but right now this is what I can do, and I love chalk couture anyway, so it is what it is. So I just dry brushed a little bit of my ink Waverly really chalk paint all the way around this sign with a bigger chip brush that I got from Home Depot. And then to finish this sign off, I put some jute back at the top on that hanger. And then I made a simple, easy, triple jute bow. If you guys have never seen my bow video, I can link that in the cards in the right hand corner. I've been doing this finger bow trick since I've been on YouTube and I think about a year ago, I finally did a bow tutorial, so I will link that for you guys. Once I had my bow all cut, made sure that the ends were even, then I just hot glued it to the top, and that quick and easy, you guys, you have a perfectly gorgeous farm fresh farmhouse sign for your kitchen or really anywhere you'd like to put it. That's the thing about farmhouse decor. It doesn't have to be specific to the space you're putting it in, um, and that's what I love most about it. Moving on to this double-sided sign. Now, originally I was gonna use that little blessed as well as the homestead. Now, in the end, I did not use the blessed, but I still think it's gorgeous and I'll definitely be using that for a different project. Now, on Instagram, my wood rounds are a fan favorite, so I really wanted to do a double-sided wood round. Now, this is a wood round from Dollar Tree. I take my transfer, cut it up, as always, all of the transfers and all of the Chalk Couture products that I used will be linked in my link tree in the description box below. You'll see Chalk Couture items used here, and then you'll also see my Chalk Couture link once you click that initial link. You can also find my Amazon store and so many other things there as well. So I mark it, and then I, obviously I use my painter's tape to um, tape that off and put a white strip in the middle or actually it's towards the bottom. I did that on purpose. Um, but I painted that with my white Waverly chalk paint. Once that was dry, I put my tape down again to protect that white. And then I gave the top and the bottom a distressed coat of ink Waverly chalk paint. Next, I go in with my the Homestead transfer and I make sure that my black is stirred up really good. I make this mistake all the time and then I don't stir it and it comes up 
not good. So anyway, make sure that you stir your paste or if you use chalk paint, no worries. Just make sure you wash your transfer really, really good. That way you can get as many uses out of it as you can. And then I transferred on the wording, obviously with the black and the greenery on with my eucalyptus. Now I hit that with some heat to make sure that it's dry before I move on to the next step. Look how gorgeous this farmhouse tile transfer is. Oh my God, you guys, I can't get enough. I want to transfer on. I want to do this to everything. I was thinking, can I do this to my floor? You guys can literally do anything with these. You can do a backsplash. You can do your floor. You can do a shower and then seal it. Like, oh my goodness, there is so many options. But anyway, once my black was dry, then obviously this is a huge transfer. So make your life easier nobody says you don't you have to leave it whole i like to cut mine up that way it's much easier to use now you can keep yours whole it's harder to wash and it's harder to use however i mean it's still doable now look how gorgeous this is you guys so once i was done the top part then i flipped it and did the bottom part and i absolutely this is my favorite okay this is my favorite i usually don't have a favorite but that one is. So once I was done that side, then I flipped it over. I gave it a distressed coat. I almost said good coat. <laughs> I gave it a distressed coat of my dried sage Dixie Belle. Look how gorgeous this color is. And then once again, I used that transfer and I used the bottom piece once again, transferring on as much as I could and then I just flipped it once it was dry and then I transferred on the rest. Now I could have went and got the other piece but honestly I do not mind the way that it looked so I just flipped it and went with it that way I only have one transfer to wash. Now I personally like the distressed um, coat. I, I purposely do mine like that. I don't press down as hard in certain spots because I like the way that it looks, but if you don't like that look and you want a clean finish, just make sure that you press down evenly and you get your paste or your, you know, chalk paint, whatever you're using on your transfers, make sure that you get it through the screen completely. Once that was dry, then I took my, my roost, my rules transfer. I was just going to use, or originally I was going to do something different. Like I said, I was going to do the blessed, but I decided to just put the rooster in there. I thought that it just looked great against that farmhouse tile and I truly love the simplicity of it. So let me know in the comments down below which side of this sign is your favorite. Okay guys, now this is the bonus DIY I was telling you about. I've had these canisters for a few weeks now and I have been waiting for this transfer to get here so that I could do the canisters myself. So I took the label transfer, I cut off the one that I liked, and then for you know the wording, I got the flour, the coffee, and the sugar, but of course, if you get these or have these, you can transfer on whatever you like in any color that you please. So I chose black and white. Obviously, my main colors in my kitchen are that farmhousey green. It's actually the color of the year, which I had no idea when I painted the kitchen cabinets that. However, that's what I picked. I really don't know why, you guys. I was thinking gray, but once we went to go pick a color, I just thought that color was gorgeous. So my main colors are that green, black, and white. So I did my labels all in black. And then the trick to this, because I was really afraid that when I pulled up the wording, then the chalk paste would come up since this is, you know, like a metal tin. But all I did was just fuzz my wording really, really, really good. And then when I laid it down, I just kind of dropped it on and lightly smoothed out right where the letters were. That way, you know, the rest of the transfer wasn't 
too stuck and then when I pulled it up I was just very 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 gentle and it came out perfectly I love these so much now you're gonna see here in a minute that you can stack them side by side however I personally love the way that they look stacked one on top of another so that's another question I have for you if you guys were displaying this in your kitchen would you display them one on top of another or would you display them side by side Okay, friends, so if you have been around with me for a while, then you know last year I made this little farmhouse decor shelf that everybody fell in love with, me included. I loved that project so much. And then after that, I ended up collabing with Bargain Bethany. You heard me right. The myth, the legend, the woman. I love her so much. She is such a sweet person and she was kind enough to do a video with me where I kind of took a project that she did and recreated it and then she took a project that I did and recreated it and she took my farmhouse shelf and made a little spice rack. So for this video I thought that it would be super cute and I did want a spice rack like this in my kitchen anyway i just ordered these gorgeous spices which you'll see in a minute that the spices i ended up having to display in here they look a hot mess because i ended up throwing a bunch of spices away so that i could order this new set but anyway that's besides the point so i took four of these boxes from dollar tree obviously glued them together with some wood glue and i made sure that they were really nicely glued before I clamp them together just because as you guys know these uh, Dollar Tree boxes are really wonky. Once they were dry I used my antique wax to stain it giving it like a distress coat and then I took some uh, stir sticks from Home Depot. I cut those down where the labels will go with my saw. I showed you guys that you can use a miter box and a um, hand saw that would work perfectly fine however i like to make my life a lot easier so i have one of those saws i love it so much and then i painted my stir sticks white once i was done i would glue i would glued those to the bottom of my like each rack putting some heavy stuff on it to make sure that they stay in place and then once that was dry i have a new transfer that goes it's kind of like a little jar add-on, a jar cutout add-on. It has, you know, the names of the spices and then like a picture of the spice. So what I did was I just cut off the words and then I transferred those on to my little spice rack. Once I was done, I still felt that it was missing just a little something. So all I did was take the end of my paintbrush in my black chalk paste now you can use chalk paint acrylic paint any paint will work for this part don't do not ever do not ever put acrylic paint in your transfers it will ruin it it'll be a mess just don't do it trust me but for this part you can use anything i just dipped it in the end of my paste and then put little dots on either side of the wording just to make it look a bit more finished and i absolutely love the way that this turned out again i know my spices look silly but sometimes you just have to make do with what you have Okay friends, this one is so easy. Once again, I'm gonna be using this farmhouse tile. I cannot get enough of it, I love it so much. So anyway, I took this little cutting board from Dollar Tree, a sweet subscriber sent this to me and I wanted to use it in my new kitchen. So I just kind of taped off where I eyeballed it. There was no rhyme or reason for, you know, the white space that I did, but I did just tape that off and paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint.
Once again, I laid my farmhouse tile down on that white space and I transferred that tile on with my black chalk paste, making sure that I didn't go past where my transfer was. Next, I just pulled it up to reveal that gorgeous image and then I taped it off once again so that I could use my antique wax at the bottom to stain this essentially and then I pulled the tape back and that was it for this one you guys I told you this one was super simple super easy but I think that it would make a gorgeous statement piece sitting on a shelf or on your countertop in your kitchen and I am actually going to have open shelves in my kitchen so this is where I pictured all this stuff to go Okay guys, this is the last double-sided DIY, so I guess the last two DIYs, and they are so simple. I've explained this over and over, so you don't need me to do it again, but I did take the transfer of choice. Now, originally I was just going to do the kitchen sign, but I loved <laughs> I loved the set the second saying, so I was like, that's okay. I could just make this a double-sided sign. I also have a ton of space above my counter or above my cabinets. So I have so much decor to make you guys to, you know, suit my taste above there and on my open shelves. There's just so much to do. And I'm really trying to not get stressed because you know, I just keep telling myself I'll do what I can and that's all I can do, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, all of this stuff, like I said, I had in mind for either my open shelves or above the cabinets. So I loved that I could just flip this around when I was tired of it. Look how cute this is. Many have eaten here. Few have died. And then when I flipped it over, this one says, welcome to our kitchen. And I love the little detail in the eye with the whisk. It's got little flowers in it. And I transferred on the word with the black and then obviously I did the whisk with the white once again making sure to fuzz my transfer before I lay it down and then once I pull it up you always want to pull slowly don't pull up super quick because you could get a little bit of running or um, it just won't look as nice so that is one of my biggest tips to pull up slowly make sure your paste is stirred really well and you should have a perfect product every single time look how gorgeous these signs are you guys you could gift these you could sell these i mean there is so many different ways to use chalk couture on a budget that sometimes I think people just see the price and don't see past that, but there are so many things you can do with these, you guys. So definitely utilize them as best as possible. I personally just liking, I just personally like making home decor for my home and sharing it with you guys. So let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite way to use Chalk Couture? Don't forget to sign up for club. This is your last day to get the five free transfers. You can sign up anytime you like, but to get the five free, you have to sign up February 28th, 2022. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you more than you could ever know. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning and gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.